So um, my first question was uh, just to give me a little bit of background about you and sort of how you approached Purdue is could you for the record tell me like when you first enrolled at Purdue and when you uh, tried out for Purdue Pete? Yeah, so let's see. I started at Purdue uh, two thousand and five. I was a transfer student. Um, and started in January 2005. I had done a semester in a very small school on the East Coast um, and decided that I didn't like the small school atmosphere, didn't have the sports, didn't have the big college field that, uh, that I kind of thought out at Purdue. Um, so it started in 2005 and um, went there for nuclear engineering. That's not what I had graduated with. I graduated with... Uh, political science major, and then uh, environmental science minor, um, and that was in December of 2012. So I was there for a typical four-year stint, just not the, the fall to the spring four-year stint. Okay. What, do you remember how you became interested in trying out? Yeah, so um, I was for, I forget how many games, but for some reason, my mom was involved in, like, the PTA or the Boosters Club at uh, my high school, and every once in a while, they would, like, <clears throat> shoot at, hey, the normal mascot can't, can't participate in this football game, uh, can you? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, sounds great. And so, I think I did a couple of games for my high school, uh, realized it was a pretty fun gig to do the mascot stuff. And then um, when I got to Purdue, I met a friend who took me to my first Purdue basketball game. And I saw Pete dancing around having a great time on the sidelines. And I was like, well, that looks pretty awesome. <laughs> um, I'm going to see how I can do that. Did a quick little Google search, uh, you know, Purdue Pete or Purdue mascot. Uh, found out who to contact. Found out how to how to get in touch with them. I think it was a simple email, and then it was a, oh, hey, tryouts are coming up in April or whenever the tryouts were. Um, and, yeah, the rest is history, as they say. So what was it like trying out? Were you asked to just kind of come up with something on your own to demonstrate to the judges, or did they have a script or something that they wanted you to follow? So uh, if I remember correctly... The process was you had kind of a, you had your own creative routine, and then there was a kind of a how to react to the situation. So they'd say, okay, a fan just asked you for an autograph, and their child starts to cry. What do you do? Um, and then there was, a, okay, show us how you would do um, – the fight song and just a general, general Purdue song. Um, so that was the actual like me as Pete part. And then when I was there, they had a like a basic interview with a couple of people on a panel. Um, I'm not sure if they still do that or not. I kind of feel like they got rid of that towards the end of my stint. Um, but they ever, the process was pretty cool. It was, you, know, you show up to Mackie, you're on the floor of Mackie. Uh, they say, okay, put on the head, put on the pad, um, dance around, have fun, show me what you got. So that's what I did. Okay. So they would give you the costume to put on there, like for each each person would, would wear the Purdue Pete costume in tryout? Yeah. Yeah, so it got pretty sticky by the end of tryout. <laughs> <laughs> what about... Um, after you were selected, well, I guess I should back up a little bit. When did you find out, and how did you find out that you were selected? So it was coupled up with uh, the cheerleading tryout. Um, so at the time, when I was brought on, Elvis Moya was the coach, and it was a Saturday. Um, we showed up at Mackey on Saturday morning, went through the whole process. I think by mid-afternoon, we were all done. Uh, and then he said, okay, come back at... 4 p.m. or whatever the time was, and we'll have a list of uh, who made it, who didn't, uh, for both 
cheerleaders and Pete. Uh, so I showed back up at four and uh, pretty unceremonious. It was kind of like show up, oh, hey, that's Rebecca, your name's on the thing. And then, um, okay, we'll get in touch with you afterwards. And so I went home and uh, walked back to my dorm, uh, Owen, and uh, gave my mom, dad a call and said, hey, I am now the Purdue mascot. They had absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of kept it under wraps. Uh, just because I was like, I don't know what the heck this is going to stand out to be, and who knows? Uh, and they're they're pretty excited. They're a little confused, but they're like, oh, that's cool. And, uh, but yeah. So do you know how many other people approximately might have tried out? Uh, I think my year we had um, six or seven. Okay. And I think so six or seven, and we took on four, so... Um, yeah, six or seven took on four. How do they decide which peats do what? So that, so I, I, the process may have changed um, from when I was doing it, but the way we did it was pretty democratically. Um, the coach at the time, either Arthur Smith or Elvis Moya, would say, okay, Pete, here are the events that we need to do. Um, and kind of left it up to the piece to be able to do. So if uh, so, I came in, most of my time spent, I think two years of my time spent was with John Langenkamp, uh, Carl Rebeck, and then Woody Nichols. And um, John and I, I guess, were kind of the captains, so we were the head dudes of, okay, well, if he can't make it, we'll take it uh, type thing. But it was really a who wants to do it, who can do it, and who would like to do it. So... Um, kind of go through the process of, okay, we have this wedding in Indy, who's able to, well, I can't because it's my brother's birthday or whatever it may be. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty fluid, pretty easy way of deciding who had what event. Um, and then for football games, home football games were always, uh, everybody was there and we split it up by quarter. Um, away football games, it was, um, one few would travel with the team uh, and do the whole game. And that was kind of done by who wants to go to the game and who can go to the game. And then uh, basketball, volleyball, same idea, who can go to the game and stuff like that. Okay. So for a home for a home football game, mul- there would be multiples of you kind of switching off, but then for the away games and for volleyball, it would be just one of you? Exactly. So for football games, um, we would do like tailgater. Uh, there'd be tailgating Pete. He'd go out, run around, say hi, take auto- uh, take photos and autographs with all the fans. Um, and then majority majority of the time, we would hang out with him, as in the other Pete who are not currently Pete, uh, who are not currently dressed. They would hang out with him, just kind of do a security detail a little bit. Um, and then once the game started, the, either that same Pete doing all the tailgates would stay at Pete and run out with the team and do the first quarter or switch it up, and then and then we'd change by quarters. Okay. Well, that's a good way to keep Pete fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, it's a good way because everybody has their own, a different interpretation of their idea of Pete, so... Yeah, like um, Carl, Carl Rebeck really enjoyed doing the shout dance. So third quarter, he would, he would do, he would use the third quarter piece for the majority of our time. Okay. So, did you yeah. did you have a signature move? Uh, I think people have told me I do. I I, I couldn't tell you what it is. Uh, I think I was I was a uh, happy Pete, and I don't know, just being a goofball. I think that's. That's the joy about Pete. It's really, hey, who are you as a person, and how can you bring that out as in the biggest way possible as Pete? Yeah. How, what were some of your um, favorite strategies for getting the crowd motivated? Um, I really well, just like interacting with them. So walking up into the stands, uh, kind of be like, come on, guys, you can just dance around and have fun. Um, and then every time, 
time you could possibly mess around with somebody on the field uh, within reason. Just try to do that and then just try to do as much fan engagement as possible with pictures or showing up in the stands. Um, yeah. So were there, um, when they when they make you Pete officially, are there any rules about like what you can or can't do when you're Pete? Ooh, good question. Um, I don't remember any specific, I know there are. I don't remember any specific ones. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it, don't interfere with the play of the game. You know, your job is to be there to interact and motivate the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, and to represent the school, so do that in the best way possible. Uh, but I think I, I want to say there's codes of conduct for actually for a pretty university that you're meant to follow, and those are the basic, you know, don't be a butt face to people and be kind. Um, and then the other thing was, I think the biggest thing is that Pete doesn't really talk. Mm-hmm. I think that's true with all mascots so um that, that was those are the big things so, I can't remember. Di- well did you did you often um encounter kids who might have started crying or gotten scared and if so what what would you do in those situations oh yeah no it uh, happens happens a lot uh, i think that's that's true with anybody who's dressed up as you know either a clown or pretty feet um uh, in Typically, it was, uh, you know, you back away slowly, and if, if there, there's a, so I feel like up to one years old, they would kind of, they'd be okay with it, but that one to maybe three years old, they were a little confused on who the heck you were, so that was the, that was the dicey age, uh-huh. and from three up, everybody kind of knew what's going on, so they were pretty cool and, like, kind of accepted, but... The one to three, I'd say, you kind of get down low, get to their level, uh, interact with them as, as easily as possible. And usually their parents are are there supporting, like, hey, give Pete a high five. So, you know, you do a little high five, and if they're not having it, you take off. So, <laughs> what, so what's you, wanna, your... you don't want to traumatize them. What's that? You don't want to traumatize them. Oh, exactly. Yeah, well, at least it's not as scary as a clown, I, I, in my opinion. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> so, um, tell us honestly, what what's it like to wear the head? Uh, you know, it, you can't really see much of anything. Uh, <laughs> it's the first thing. Um, first thing you notice is you can't see much, can't hear much, uh, smells a little funky, <laughs> and, and it's kind of movement. Uh, movement inhibiting, so not able to move a whole ton. Um, it's kind of it's on the heavier side of things too, mm-hmm. especially when you, we have the hammer, the head, pads. Um, yeah, it just gets a little bit on the on the heavier side if you're not used to it. I think my first football game, my shoulder that I my right arm because I'm right handed. Uh, that I held the hammer with was just like all sorts of time. And I was like, oh man, I gotta start working out a little bit more. <laughs> you suddenly would have more muscles in one arm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So do you um, do you remember that first performance you gave after you were made officially Pete? And did you have stage fright or any challenges? Oh yeah. Um, so the first thing that I had to do as Pete was is like middle of August, right before school started uh, in 20, well, 2009? Yeah, it would be 2000, August 2009. Uh, right? Yeah, uh, August 2009, and there's a West Lafayette Little League baseball game kickoff or something like that. Uh, so I had to throw out the first pitch. And, uh, yeah, it is like, well, what do I do? And, you know, of course, nobody's like, oh, hey, this is what you should do uh, as <laughs> first pitch. And it was, I went, showed up, and changed in a, what, in a groundskeeping closet. Mm. And, <laughs> which is one of the funny things about, I think, all mascots probably run into it. But you, uh, 
you're told, hey, go do this performance or whatever, and you, know, you have to show up as a normal person, say, hey, I'm Ezra Becker, and I'm going to be Purdue Pete. What would you like me to do? And they say, oh, yeah, great to meet you. Uh, I want you to do X, Y, and Z, and here, you can go change over here. And usually the change over here is in some, I don't know, closet or something. Um, but yeah, I changed, so the West Lafayette Little League, I changed in a, in a tool shed, essentially, and then went out, uh, had fun throughout the first pitch, um, kind of messed around with some kids, and went back, and I was like, oh, that's how that goes. So. Okay. Yeah, I definitely had a little bit of stage fight, though. It was like, well, what do I do? Yeah. And really, at that point, it was, well, you can kind of do whatever you want. Uh, as long as you're having fun and everybody's having fun, I, that, that's the joy of Pete. That's great. Yeah, I think for, it would take a little getting used to not being able to see that well and needing to throw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what um, what's the most unusual request you've gotten from someone when you've been Pete? Do people ever ask you to do odd things? Um, not not really. I mean, you get the drunk guys who hey, Pete, don't kiss my wife or <laughs> something stupid. It's always it's always the touch of alcohol that would uh, bring out the interesting request. There's nothing that sticks out in my mind as being very, very weird, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's nothing that I was like, oh, that makes me feel very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, uh, don't remember anything specific. Do you have um, sort of a memory or, or moment where you felt most proud being Pete? Um. You know, I think, I think just, uh, I think walking through campus or, or tailgating was always the most fun, uh, the most rewarding for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly because, you, for me, the, the most, I think the most important part of me was the, the fan interaction, the people who were just there to enjoy the game. So anything that got me out, um, you know, shaking hands, taking photos, signing autographs. That was uh, that was my most memorable part. Um, so the pre-game stuff, the after-game stuff, and just walking through campus. I'm like, I think a couple of times we decided, hey, we should just walk through campus on a random Friday afternoon. <laughs> walk through campus in peace, and you know, hey, go, what's up, guys? Happy Friday. And you have somebody with you, and they'd be your mouthpiece, and you'd be there hanging out. So sometimes you got to, so you would be given assignments, but then other times you were able to just kind of go out and be Pete whenever you wanted to. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the joy of having the costume. Um, we have costume in the access to Mackie, and so you go and change and uh, go do Pete. But uh, we didn't do that very frequently. It's more of like a Friday, Friday before a big football game mm-hmm. uh, when there's a lot of people on campus. So. I think, when did they start doing the bridge walk? Uh, I want to say they started doing the bridge walk. Oh, shoot. Maybe 2010? And so we started just kind of walking around campus, maybe 2008, 2009, just to get a little bit more uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, and I think going back to... My first day as P, I think I gave you an incorrect date of 2009. It was 2005, so August 2005 would have been my first P date with uh, the West Lafayette Little League. August 2005. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you did you have any rivalries with other mascots? Um. No, I mean everybody in the Big Ten is you know a rival of Purdue. Obviously, um, yeah. there wasn't like a there wasn't like a built up story of uh, Purdue, Pete, and and uh, Goldie the Gopher, our arch nemesis, arch nemesis. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and so 
so you know every time they see each other they fight and there's nothing like that it's, um, if there were to be a, like a rival it's just whoever was whoever was against you on that day mm-hmm what about um, people trying to play pr- pranks on you like I've heard that some of the Pete's have had their heads stolen or people have tried to take their heads has anything like that happened to you oh yeah the uh, the hammer was always the first thing to get grabbed when mm-hmm. you know, walking through a crowd, um, whether at home or away. Uh, so you just kind of have to hang on to it pretty tightly. Um, then, this is for cost and security, I guess. Uh, after after everything is usually back in a Mackie, which at the time had a, a locker room access code, and then we had our own locker, so it, you know that was coded as well. So kind of double form of security. Um, nothing, let's see, are there? I don't think anything went missing, like a head or a hammer while I was there. So we kept everything pretty under wraps. Was it ever difficult to balance like your schoolwork and homework and assignments with your Pete duties? No, no, that was the joy of having uh, three other Pete um, to work with is, is, you know, it never got too overwhelming. Um, had there just been one of us, it, I think, yeah, it would have been, it would have been pretty tough. Uh, but there was never a time, I think even like the very, very busy time, the homecoming, where there's homecoming game, there's a homecoming parade, there's a homecoming walk, there's a homecoming volleyball game, and all the other stuff. There was never a time that I was like, oh man, this is way too stressful. Um, because at the core of being a Purdue Pete or any mascot, really, is you know, you're just having fun. So, yeah. So is that I, that kind of um, segues into my next question, with which was, um, what do you think is the secret to just being a, a good Pete or a good mascot in general? I think just having as much fun as you can, um, enjoying the enjoying the joy that people get out of seeing you out and about. Uh, yeah, and just interacting with people, getting their, uh, getting their uh, feedback, hopefully positive feedback, and, and then, uh, yeah, I think the, the key to being a good Pete is very similar to being a good person. It's like, you know, have as much fun, be as good as a person as you possibly can, and uh, for, especially for mascots, you know, make it as big as possible, too. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, one thing I want to make sure and get on the record for each, Pete, if I can, is what your major and graduation year were, and then if you have advice for any future Pete's. Um, so my major was political science and, and then a... Uh, uh, so BA from the School of Liberal Arts and School of Science, and then graduated in December of 2008. Um, words of advice, I'd say, I'd say, again, going back to just have as much fun as you can with it. Um, yeah, have as much fun as you can with it and know that you represent a great institution and Purdue University and you know, be, that, be that fun-loving face of the, of the university. That's great. I I wanted I I wanted to be sure and ask you though because I didn't think this was true, but I I should confirm with you. Did they propose any changes to Pete during your time? So like the costume. Yeah. Uh, so that whole. So I think that was at the very tail end of that, if I remember correctly. So I want to say they proposed that. At some point in 2009, uh, then they had a new costume in either 2011 or 2010. And if I remember correctly, that costume was quickly shot down by just about everybody at the university. <laughs> I heard about that. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, I don't even know where that costume went off. So when I was back for homecoming, that came up. And um, people were like, yeah, what the heck is that costume? Um, and nobody seemed to know. So. Oh, my goodness. 
It may be really valuable one day. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, one thing that they did, so we had Rowdy. I don't know if you... Yeah, I did want to ask you about that um, because Rowdy yeah. wasn't a- around for all that long, and so I think it's important that we try to document his time at Purdue, and I probably need to try to find all of the people who may have played Rowdy as well. But what was what was that like interacting with him? So Rowdy was... Rowdy. Rowdy was essentially one of those persuadable, dancey things um, that people would get in. I think they have a bunch of like NBA uh, in, in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he was around. When was he around? So he was there two and a half out of my four years. Uh, so my beginning, so 2005 for me until like 2000. And Seven-ish, um, and I'm not sure why they discontinued him. I think he was just kind of a gift to be a pain in the butt. The motor, <laughs> motor that would blow him up, uh, would die frequently, and then there's holes in the suit, so there's just issues. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, Rowdy was just kind of like the big goofy, goofy younger brother of Pete. Uh, you know, you. You'd hop in them and gyrate as fast as you possibly could and for a quick second, turn them off, let them get these by and then you fill them back up and do it again and then jump back into the locker room and change. Wow. <laughs> so. Did you have a love-hate relationship with the Boilermaker special? <laughs> no, no, that thing is pretty awesome. I mean, yeah, it's the official mascot, uh, but he... Pete is recognized as the, the on field mascot that, you know, kind of fulfills the normal mascotting duties of the school. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the Boilermaker special is gorgeous. It's pretty fun. You get to ride around it as Pete, and that's always a joy to get a bunch of people who are like, oh man, this is a rare opportunity. So. Yeah, I always see people looking really happy when they're on it. So. Yeah. Um, just one last question for you. I know that a bunch of you former Pete's got together recently at homecoming for your reunion. Uh, did you do anything exciting, special, or do you have any secret handshakes or traditions amongst the former Pete's that we should let the public know about? Uh, probably shouldn't let the public know about anything. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Supposedly, they developed a secret handshake, and they told me about it, and uh, it, is, it is goofy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, there, at, at homecoming, it was Pete's 60th birthday, and uh, they brought a bunch of the old Pete's onto, onto the field. I think um, they had Pete number three. Oh, wow. One of the, yeah, one of the, John, John Nopes, or mm-hmm. Nopes. I don't know how to say his last name, but he was there, and he was—I think he's Pete number three. Um, so yeah, it, that was cool. Uh, but for special things, no, it's just get together. We had a little barbecue. Um, yeah, hung out. Well, that's nice. I would imagine it was a very energetic crowd. Yeah, you know, it, it's crazy to think I've been removed from Purdue since. 2008, essentially, uh, just not being pretty feet, and you know, I haven't seen some of the guys in a real long time, and you know that time period, it, a lot can change, and um, for the same time, you know, the guys are still exactly how they were uh, when we were in, at Purdue, so it's it's great to see everybody, and, it, and it's also really exciting to see the changes in the lives too. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was my last question for you. I was wondering, Ezra, did you have anything that you wanted to, any memories or anything you wanted to share? Yeah, I think you, I think you got them all. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't stress enough just how, how much fun that being a Pete was, uh, both for the school and I think most importantly, it really helped me kind of find my, my niche at Purdue. Um, you know, provided me with a great great group of guys to hang out with. Um, it also provided me a 
awesome way to see the university in, uh, in a way that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to see. It's wonderful. Uh, well, we really yeah. appreciate your services, Pete. I think it's it definitely takes a love of the university to do that kind of work. So it's not a position where you can ever be in a bad mood. <laughs> so Yeah, no, that's very true. Very true. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to answer my questions. And um, just to give you a sense of what we'll do next, we have student workers who transcribe the interviews, and then we send the transcript to you or the person who was interviewed just to look over and let us know if, you know, there's anything we misspelled or anything we couldn't uh, understand on the recording that you wanted to clarify for us. And then once you've looked it over, we, you know, make it part of our collection here so people can see. Um, you know that we have it on our website and they can either ask for a copy or come in and listen to it so that's that's kind of our process and we awesome. yeah we really appreciate it yeah well it's been a pleasure talking to you as well and um, yeah when you get that all transcribed let me know and we'll go from there perfect thanks so much I hope you have a good rest of your day thank you Sammy I hope you do too okay thank you bye bye okay. That was an oral history interview with one of the former Purdue Peets, Ezra Parker. The date is October 24th, 2016, and the interview was conducted by Sammy Morris for the Purdue Library's oral history program.